Jamie had always been a skeptic when it came to the supernatural, but that all changed when his family inherited a large old mansion in the remote countryside. From the moment they arrived, Jamie felt a constant unease. The mansion was grand, but there was something off about it. The air was thick and heavy, and the silence was deafening. Every step Jamie took echoed through the halls, adding to the foreboding atmosphere. The first night, Jamie was awoken by a strange noise. He sat up in bed, straining his ears to hear. It was a low, guttural growl that seemed to come from the walls themselves. But when he turned on the light, the noise stopped abruptly. Jamie dismissed it as his imagination and tried to go back to sleep. But the unease lingered, and he felt as though he was being watched. He could feel a presence in the room with him though he could see nothing. As the night wore on, the atmosphere in the mansion grew more oppressive. Jamie could hear faint whispers and see shadows moving in the corners of his vision. Every time he turned around, there was nothing there. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. He got out of bed and started exploring the mansion, trying to find the source of the strange noises. But the more he searched the more he felt as though he was being pulled deeper into darkness. The mansion seemed to grow larger and more labyrinthine, with strange symbols etched into the walls. Jamie felt as though he was losing his mind, as though he was being dragged down into an abyss of darkness and horror. As he stumbled through the halls, Jamie realized that the mansion was alive. It was a sentient being, filled with a malevolent power that wanted nothing more than to consume him. And as he stood there, trembling and alone, he knew that he was powerless against the power of darkness that was slowly closing in on him. Chapter 2 Jamie had spent another sleepless night in the mansion, tossing and turning in his bed. He felt a cold breeze sweep through the room, even though the windows were closed, and heard the sound of footsteps coming closer and closer. He sat up, his heart racing, and saw a figure standing at the foot of his bed. It was a woman dressed in a flowing white gown, her long, dark hair cascading down her shoulders. Jamie rubbed his eyes, thinking it was a trick of his tired mind. But the woman remained, her eyes fixed on him. She didn't speak but he could feel her questioning him, probing him, as if she were looking for something. Jamie tried to get out of bed, but his limbs felt heavy, as if they were made of lead. The woman moved closer and reached out to touch him, and Jamie felt a jolt of electricity run through his body, and then all of a sudden the woman disappeared, leaving behind a trail of cold air and the lingering scent of lavender. Jamie sat there, his heart pounding, wondering if he had just had a hallucination or if what he had seen was real. He knew one thing for certain. He could no longer stay in the mansion. Chapter 3 Jamie decided to leave the mansion, but something held him back. He couldn't shake off the feeling that he was being watched, and the presence of the woman in white lingered in his mind. He decided to explore the mansion further, hoping to find some answers. As he walked down the dark corridor, he heard a faint whisper. He stopped in his tracks, listening carefully. The whisper grew louder, and he realized it was a woman's voice. He followed the sound until he came to a room with a closed door. Jamie hesitated for a moment before pushing the door open. Inside, he saw a woman with long, dark hair, sitting in front of a mirror, brushing her hair. She looked up and met his gaze. Her eyes were cold and empty, and Jamie felt a chill run down his spine. Who are you? Jamie asked, his voice shaking. The woman stood up slowly and walked towards him. I am Juliet, she said, her voice barely audible. I have been trapped in this mansion for centuries. The power of darkness holds me captive. Jamie felt a wave of fear wash over him, 
He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Juliet seemed to be a ghost trapped in the mansion, and he feared that he would suffer the same fate if he didn't leave soon. He turned around to head back to his room when he saw the woman in white again. She was standing at the end of the corridor, beckoning him to follow her. Jamie felt torn between the two women, unsure of what to do. As he stood there paralyzed with fear, he heard a loud noise coming from the basement. It sounded like something was trying to break out. Jamie realized that he needed to leave the mansion before it was too late, but he couldn't shake off the feeling that he was being drawn towards the power of darkness. Chapter 4 Jamie made his way to the front door of the mansion, his heart pounding in his chest. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong in this place. As he fumbled with the lock, he heard a soft whisper behind him. Please, don't leave me here alone, Jamie. It was Juliet. She had crept up behind him so silently that he hadn't even heard her. Jamie turned around slowly, his eyes locking onto hers. He could see the desperation in her face, and it tugged at his heartstrings. I have to go, he said softly, trying to keep his voice steady. I can't stay here. Juliet's expression shifted to one of anger and frustration. You can't leave me here, she cried. You're the only one who can help me. As she spoke, Jamie felt a cold breeze sweep through the entryway, causing the candles on the table to flicker and dance. He shivered feeling the presence of something dark and dangerous. It was as if the mansion itself were alive, and it was trying to keep him there. Jamie took a step back, his hand still on the door handle. I'm sorry, he said, his voice breaking. I can't help you. I have to go. With that, he yanked open the door and fled into the night, the cold air biting at his skin. As he stumbled down the front steps, he looked back at the mansion and saw the woman in white standing in the doorway, watching him with cold, emotionless eyes. Jamie knew he had to get as far away from that place as possible. He started running, his heartbeat pounding in his ears, but he couldn't shake the feeling that something was following him, something dark and powerful. He didn't know what it was, but he knew that he had to keep moving or it would consume him too. Chapter 5 Jamie ran as fast as he could, but he couldn't shake the feeling that something was following him. The woods were dark, and the wind howled through the trees, making it hard to hear anything over the noise. He stumbled over a tree root and fell to the ground, scrambling to get back up as quickly as possible. As he rose to his feet, he saw a figure standing in front of him. It was the woman in white, her gown billowing in the wind her eyes as black as coal. Jamie tried to run the other way, but she was too fast, grabbing him by the arm and pulling him back towards the mansion. He fought against her, but she was stronger than she looked. As they entered the mansion, Jamie felt an overwhelming sense of dread wash over him. He knew he had made a mistake coming back here and that he may never leave again. The woman in white led him through the halls of the mansion, her grip never loosening. Jamie tried to ask her who she was or what she wanted, but she remained silent. As they walked, the walls seemed to close in on them, and the air grew thicker and heavier. Jamie's chest felt tight, and he struggled to breathe. He had to get out of here, but he didn't know how. Suddenly, the woman in white stopped in front of a door. She pushed it open and motioned for Jamie to enter. Inside was a room bathed in red light, with strange symbols etched into the walls. Jamie felt a cold hand on the back of his neck and turned to see the woman in white standing behind him. She whispered in his ear, You belong to me now. And with those words, Jamie knew that he was trapped here, forever at the mercy of the power of darkness. Chapter 6 
Jamie's heart pounded as the woman in white led him through the dark mansion. She had a hold on him, and he couldn't resist her pull. They entered a room that was shrouded in darkness, with only a dim light flickering in one corner. Suddenly, a blinding light illuminated the room, revealing a figure standing in front of them. It was a man, tall and imposing, with piercing red eyes that seemed to glow in the light. He spoke in a voice that was deep and menacing. Welcome, Jamie. I have been waiting for you. Jamie tried to back away, but he was rooted to the spot. The woman in white disappeared, leaving him alone with the terrifying figure. Jamie stammered, Who, who are you? The man smiled, revealing his sharp teeth. I am the master of this mansion, and you belong to me now. Jamie's mind raced as he tried to think of a way to escape. He knew he was in grave danger and had to get out of there before it was too late. Without warning, the man lunged at him, and Jamie felt a sharp pain in his neck. He screamed in agony as he realized he had been bitten. The room spun around him as he felt himself getting weaker by the second. The man leaned in close, whispering in his ear, or mine forever. Jamie's eyes closed and he felt himself slipping away into darkness. He knew he was trapped here in this mansion of horrors with no hope of escape. The sound of laughter echoed through the room as the man disappeared into the shadows, leaving Jamie alone in his terror. Chapter 7 Jamie had lost track of time since he was bitten by the terrifying man with red eyes. He felt weak and drained, but he noticed the mansion was brighter than before. The darkness had lifted slightly, and he felt a glimmer of hope. As he stood up from the cold stone floor, Jamie heard the haunting melody of a piano coming from a nearby room. He followed the sound, which led him to a grand piano in a room filled with warm light. There he saw the woman in white sitting at the piano, playing a beautiful melody with ease. She stopped when she noticed Jamie and smiled warmly at him. I know you're scared, she said, but I promise you, there's a way out of this. You just have to trust me. Jamie was torn between his fear and his curiosity. He knew he couldn't trust the woman in white completely, but he also knew he didn't want to be trapped in the mansion forever. Who are you? He asked tentatively. I am Elena, she replied. I too was trapped in this mansion once, but I found a way out, and I believe I can help you. Jamie felt a sense of relief wash over him. He followed Elena as she led him through the mansion showing him secret passages and hidden rooms. He saw Juliet once again, but this time she seemed different. She was no longer a ghostly figure, but a real person. And she too had been trapped in the mansion. As the day turned into night, Jamie felt a sense of hope he hadn't felt before. He knew he was still in danger, but he also knew that with Elena and Juliet's help, he might just make it out alive. The mansion was still alive with the malevolent power, but Jamie felt as though the darkness had lifted ever so slightly. He knew there was still a long way to go, but he also knew he wasn't alone anymore. Chapter 8 Jamie still felt uneasy as he followed Elena through the dark and winding hallways of the mansion. He couldn't shake off the feeling of something watching him, waiting for the right moment to strike. He nearly jumped out of his skin when a hand touched his shoulder. He turned around to see a woman with long, flowing red hair and piercing green eyes. She wore a white dress, but unlike the other woman in white he had encountered, this one was stained with dirt and blood. "'Who are you?' Jamie asked, keeping his distance." The woman smiled, revealing two rows of sharp teeth. I am Lilith, she said. 
and I'm here to help you. Jamie didn't believe her for a second. He had learned the hard way that nothing in this mansion was to be trusted. But Elena seemed unfazed by Lilith's appearance and even seemed to know her. Lilith can help us escape, Elena said, her voice trembling slightly. But we have to be careful. Jamie nodded, still unsure, but he didn't have any other options. If Lilith could help them escape, he had to take the chance. Together, the three of them made their way through the mansion, their footsteps echoing off the walls. Jamie couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, but he pushed it aside. He had to focus on the task at hand. As they made their way down a dark staircase, Lilith suddenly disappeared. Jamie and Elena froze, unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, they heard Lilith's voice coming from somewhere down the hallway. Hurry, she whispered urgently. We don't have much time. Jamie and Elena exchanged a worried glance before her and following Lilith's voice. As they turned the corner, they came face to face with a group of shadowy figures. Jamie's heart dropped to his stomach. He knew they were in serious trouble. Chapter 9 Jamie, Elena, and Lilith stumbled upon a room filled with cages, each containing a different kind of animal. The stench was overwhelming, and the animals looked malnourished and neglected. As they approached the cages, the animals started to growl and howl, making the hairs on the back of their necks stand up. Suddenly, the cages started to rattle and shake, and the animals went into a frenzy. The three of them stepped back, wondering what was happening when they noticed the darkness in the room growing thicker and more oppressive. Jamie could feel the malevolent power in the mansion seeping into the room, trying to suffocate them. Out of nowhere, a swarm of bats flew out of the cages, causing Jamie and Elena to duck for cover. Lilith stood still, watching the swarm with a sense of fascination. The bats swarmed around Jamie, and he felt them scratching and biting at his skin. He was momentarily distracted when a shadowy figure attacked Lilith, causing her to fall to the ground. Jamie and Elena managed to escape the room, but they could still hear the animals inside howling with madness. As they ran through the hallway, they caught sight of other animals, some dead, others alive, but all looking miserable. Jamie felt a sense of horror and disgust at the sight of it all. As they continued to explore, Jamie couldn't shake off the feeling that the mansion was alive and was feeding on their fears and anxieties. The thought left him feeling hopeless, wondering if they would ever escape the mansion's clutches. They pressed on, knowing that they had to find a way out before it was too late. Chapter 10 Jamie, Elena, and Lilith emerged from the room of caged animals, shaken and bruised. The bats had left deep cuts on their skin, and the sound of their screeching still echoed in their ears. They stumbled down the hallway, holding on to each other for support. But as they rounded a corner, they froze. Before them stood a figure of pure darkness. It towered over them, its eyes glowing with malevolent energy. Jamie could feel its power seeping into him, making him weak and vulnerable. Elena and Lilith seemed equally frightened, their eyes widening in terror. The figure spoke, its voice a deep, echoing growl. You dare to trespass in my domain? It said, You are not but insignificant insects to be crushed beneath my might. Jamie tried to speak, but his voice was hoarse. We didn't mean to, he managed to stammer out. But the figure paid him no heed. It stepped forward, and the three of them gasped as it passed through them like smoke. They stumbled back, dizzy and disoriented. As they regained their senses, they realized that the figure had vanished, but its power lingered, like a black cloud that threatened to consume them. 
Jamie felt a wave of despair wash over him, leaving him trembling and weak. Elena and Lilith clung to him, whispering words of encouragement. But Jamie knew they were all in grave danger. The power of darkness had shown itself, and it was not to be trifled with. <laughs>